As we gather back, we'd like to turn our attention to some announcements for this month. It's already June. Half of the year of 2019 is has passed. So as we come into the second half, just we continue on. Um, remember to pray. Um, prayer is what drives um, just the work of God. It aligns our heart with the will of God. So the focus this month is to pray for the men's ministry. And as we uh, think about the men, we think about their the three generations, but also the men uh, in your midst, whether it's your father, um, um, men in this in this in your church, or men uh, in your uh, life group, and so forth. So pray for the men, especially the men, those that minister to the men. Um, also, this month we will have church camp. Um, please uh, register with Jim as you think about how we can reach out to our friends and family. One way is to uh, to go to camp, and it's not that far. It's it's like Target's just around the corner, so it feels like you're still in civilization. But then um, it's a place where you can hang out with your friends and allow them to get to know the love of God for them. So I encourage you, if you haven't uh, signed up, to sign up, or if your parents haven't done it, to do so, and to invite your friends to come and uh, just hang out for a weekend. And this Friday, again, we come as a church um, to to see and to be led by what God is is doing amongst us. So come to Anaheim Team Huddle. So it's important for, for all ages to come. Um, for those that haven't been coming, um, this is how you know where, what God is doing. And you can't huddle, you know, you can't be part of the team if you're not huddling with the team. So come, um, whether you, this is your first time or your many time you've come, come with an open heart to hear what God has to say about uh, fellowshipping with one another. So we'll learn about that. So let's turn to uh, J- John 10. Uh, it's just refocusing, kind of connecting to what we've already learned as it's Communion Sunday. A lot has been uh, said already regarding um, this passage, um, but just wanted just to focus uh, on a few things as we think about what Christ is saying regarding laying down his life. And as we heard in John 10, um, the picture of the sheep, the shepherd, and the sheep. And I think one thing as we think about is the picture in verse 7. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. We understand the picture of the good shepherd. But here Christ picture, paints a picture of a door. That I am the gate, I am the way into becoming part of the, the flock. And then what happens inside the gate is protection and life. Everything outside of the gate is not life. There are thieves there to destroy. And so life is where the shepherd is. Life is where the gate is, and it's only through him. So it's a very simple concept. But are we entering into the, sh- the sheep gate by, the, by him, Christ? Do we have life? Are you part of the, the flock? Because the rest of it is not, is the starting point is really that you must enter by the gate. And if you have not entered by the gate, then you, are, you do not have life. And if you do not have life, then you do not know the shepherd. Because life comes when the shepherd lays down his life for those sheep that are in the pen. There's many sheep outside. But those are not his sheep. And so I think that's an important thing to think about as we come to the communion, different things. Am I his? Have I come through the door? Because only through him do I have life. And if I am his, how do you know? Well, you know because you hear his voice. You know the shepherd. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and I know my own. And my own knows me, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. 
Jesus doesn't lay his life down for all the sheep ever existed. It is for his sheep. It is for his sheep that he has purchased with his blood that know him, that he, they, he knows just as he knows the Father. And it's also talking about us in verse 16. I have other sheep not of this fold, and I must bring them here also. And they will, again, hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The unity of the body is evident in how we listen to God's voice. So as we just mentioned, the Anaheim huddle is listening to the shepherd's voice. Not many shepherd's voice, not many different opinions, only one opinion, only one direction, and that is to the shepherd. And why? At the end we see that it is because of the plan of God, that the plan of God was to lay down his life, but also to raise it up again. And you see that Jesus laying down his life was not an impulse, but was a plan, plan because he was listening to God the Father. And then at the end, I just wanted us to focus that this commandment I received from the Father. So Christ modeled that kind of listening to the voice. Not that he had to, but I think because he, as the, the shepherd, modeled it for the sheep. And I think that's his love for the Father, as we heard. So as we think about that, do you, do you have life? Have you entered in his name and in his, his will? And also, do you know and listen to the, she, the shepherd? And one way you show that is as we come to his message in Romans. So let's turn there. How have you been listening in Romans? We've heard many sermons, many words from the shepherd. Many words maybe you have forgotten. Maybe words that you have fallen asleep during the time. But maybe this is a time where you say, Lord, you are my shepherd. I will hear you. So let us turn to Romans 16 and let us stand together. As we conclude the time here in Romans from 1 to 24. Romans 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church which is at Cancria, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and that you help her in whatever matter she have, may have need of you. For she herself has also been a helper of many, and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Achilla, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life risked their own necks, to whom not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Also greet that church that is in their house. Greet Apennitus, my beloved, who is my, the first convert to Christ from Asia. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Adronicus and Junius, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are outstanding among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus and my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Greet Apelles, the approved in Christ, Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my kinsman. Greet those of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, workers in the Lord. Greet Persis, the beloved, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, a choice man in the Lord, also his mother and mine. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brethren with them. Greet Philagus and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learn, and turn away from them. 
For such men are slaves, not of our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. For the report of your obedience has reached to all. Therefore, I am rejoicing over you. But I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you, and as do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tertius, who write this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, greets you, and Cordus, the brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to the time before God's word, let's just uh, turn our heart to him and just uh, lift him up in, in our praise, in our thanksgiving, and ask that he speak to us so that we can see the shepherd, hear his voice, obey him, and honor him. Lord, make your word lifted up before us and in us. Make it honorable to us and compelling to our soul. And help us, Lord, to respond to your voice as your sheep listening to the shepherd, loving his voice, responding to his voice, obeying his voice. Speak to us, Lord. We listen now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As I listen to the, the word read to us, I feel that uh, we are in a very special time. And I don't know if you noticed that, but very rarely do we listen to you know, the text uh, from uh, Romans 16, 1 to 24, all the way through, with all the names and with all the you know, hard to uh, pronounce uh, names and, and people. And yet we have read that uh, through uh, three weeks in a row. And uh, that is to, uh, to uh, honor his word, to, to enter into his word with the understanding that, that all his word is, uh, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for all those of us who listen. Uh, and, uh, and, and Paul has said that in Timothy and we were reminded of that uh, every time. But just, just, uh, just the act that we stand before the names proclaimed to us for people that we never know uh, but understand that uh, through them and through their names and through their experiences and through their relationship, especially in the church, that uh, the love of God in the church and the expression of relationship in the church is uh, the, uh, the model for us uh, to live our life and to also live the life of the church. Uh, so it is about relationship in the church and uh, Paul focuses on the relationship he has built with sin in the church. And so, uh, as we have gone through this, uh, we talk about the expression love relationship in the church. And uh, I won't go back uh, to each point and each name uh, as, uh, uh, for, uh, for us to review, but just to mention that the church is uh, made up of ordinary people in the Lord. Uh, so the core relationship is, uh, is uh, the fact that we are in the Lord. It is our first common ground, it is our basic bond. And because we are in the Lord, we belong to one another. And the fact that we are in the Lord is permanent. Uh, the relationship that we have uh, with one another is forever. You realize that? That it's also in the church here on earth, but in the e eternal state, uh, we are in the Lord together. And, and so we are the community of people who are in Christ. Uh, and that is the first level of identification. Each one of us belong to Christ, identified with Christ, united with Christ. And therefore, we have life in us and the life that we share with one another. We also mentioned last time, and uh, it's good to re be reminded, that uh, the church is made up of ordinary people growing to know the Lord through sound doctrine. And, and, and the list of the names, uh, just ordin or, or, ordinary people uh, the, who are the recipient of the great doct doct doctrinal treaty, uh, the letter to the Romans. Uh, as we, be, uh, we study the book of Romans, if any uh, book that is deeper, uh, it's deep in, 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 in the truth and deep in doctrine, uh, this is, uh, this is the, that book. 
and 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 were uh, thrilled to see that uh, it was addressed to people like Empiratus and Rufus and people that uh, that uh, just like us, and and they are the ones who received the, this this uh, this doctrinal uh, teaching so that they can grow in the Lord. And, and as they grow in the Lord, we, we see that they are deepening their relationship with one another in the Lord. We hear a lot of uh, beloved, we hear a lot of my, uh, my beloved, or my friends, or, or my, uh, the, the one that I have relationship with. And we're also reminded uh, that uh, the church is made up of people who work hard together uh, for the Lord. Uh, everybody works hard. Uh, we, we, we hear names, we hear Mary who works hard. Um, we, uh, we hear uh, fellow workers uh, are standing among uh, the people in the church. Uh, so Paul is calling out for everybody uh, to serve as he recognized those who have been uh, doing so. And he recognized uh, 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 those who have uh, the fellowship with him in, in the suffering for the gospel. Uh, as he mentioned, uh, some of them are his fellow uh, prisoners. Uh, they have uh, suffered uh, for the sake of the gospel. Uh, he mentioned uh, the household, uh, so we again uh, 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 reconnect to that truth that God has put, put us, each one, in a family, but also in, together in the family of God. And our families worshiping together, serving together, growing together, all the ups and downs uh, of, the, uh, of the church life is uh, essential uh, to the life of the church, but also to, to the growth of each uh, and every one. Uh, that we are blessed to, to be able to, uh, to, to serve together and to grow together as a family. And, 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 and that we need to uh, uh, protect that, uh, pr uh, both privilege and blessings, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, live in th uh, gratitude before the Lord. Uh, uh, we uh, here mention uh, our generation women, uh, the uh, the, uh, the ladies are named elegant and delicate, but uh, work very hard. Uh, they are not loud, they're not aggressive, uh, they're uh, sweet and quiet, but they are confident and they are effective. And, uh, and uh, they're those who have the whole uh, life of service. Uh, uh, we talk about the chosen Rufus and the special situation of his life that has a father who is uh, Simon the Siren who uh, carried the cross of Christ. And by that uh, grace of election, uh, the whole family belong uh, to the church. And somehow also uh, they give support to the Apostle Paul in the way that he said, your mother and also mine. So again, we, we see the depth of relationship and, 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 and the work of God's grace. And, and, and so uh, uh, Paul extended the greeting to the small group of leaders in the church, as he mentioned them. And we, we see the, just many different ways that... Uh, uh, that, uh, that the church is brought together and nurtured together uh, in the Lord. So we, uh, we, we were at the end of, uh, of verse uh, 15 last time, and uh, we were looking at uh, verse 16. So let me just start there uh, with the command, uh, uh, the uh, instruction uh, from Paul to the church. Uh, greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. So now Paul brings everything together with a call to show love and affection in the church. Uh, in summing up all his love to his friends uh, now residing in, in Rome, he calls them for a, 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 a familiar duty or an assignment uh, that they're supposed to do and they are called to do, and that is uh, to greet one another with a holy kiss. Now it is a common practice at that time, and. Uh, uh, the equivalent for us in our culture would be a handshake or a shoulder hug. Uh, we mentioned that uh, the point is not the kiss, but the, the, uh, the, uh, the point is to show warm affection uh, toward one another uh, as appropriate in our culture. And, and uh, scripture repeated uh, that uh, instruction several times, greet one another with holy kiss, greet all of God's people with a holy kiss, greet one another with kiss of love. So, so, so in the church, uh, we are called to express uh, holy affections uh, uh, as Peter uh, at another uh, dimension when he mentioned that greet one another with a kiss of love. So it is agape, it is uh, also a holy kiss, and it's a kiss of warm affection. 
it is a connection that uh, uh, that we 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 are to uh, uh, to uh, to live in connection uh, with one another. So there is a place of holy affection in the church. Um, uh, we mentioned in Acts uh, 20 when uh, when Paul was saying goodbye to uh, to the elders uh, from Ephesus. Uh, as he shared with them and, and talked with them when they said goodbye, scripture that uh, scripture said that they began to weep aloud and embrace Paul and repeatedly kiss him, grieving especially over the word that he had spoken, that they would not see his face again, and they were accompany him to the ship, uh, to uh, to the ship, and so we see here grown men, pastors and leaders. Uh, crying on, on Paul's shoulders uh, and repeatedly kiss him because uh, the affection they have for him and 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 he, and he for them. Uh, so uh, holy affection uh, in the church is what uh, uh, consistent with uh, with the the, the 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 nature of our relationship. And uh, and Paul called us to be uh, to, to to show that in a tangible way, uh, in a visible way. And, and not just uh, you know to those uh, we know, but 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 uh, but to reach out to those that um, uh, that may may have not uh, have a, a very clear connection with us. In in our midst, that would be you know maybe we're reaching out to the Vietnamese uh, 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 group that uh, in our church, or, or younger group, or older group, uh, uh, just to make a a a, a very intentional. A gesture uh, or a commitment, uh, so that uh, <laughs> we can demonstrate the love in a feasible, tangible way. <laughs> and, and and Paul said, "All the churches of, of Christ greet you." Uh, and Paul can say that uh, uh, because, as uh, the apostle of the uh, of the Gentiles, he represents the Gentile churches, and they have the same uh, uh, commonness uh, because they have been taught the same truth. And they've been uh, called to live the same holy standard and, and the life that, uh, according to his teaching, uh, so so as Paul speaks to the church in Rome, uh, he he see and he sends the unity of the churches, and he say all the churches of Christ uh, send you greetings, uh, and 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 that means uh, the the churches from Jerusalem to Elycrium. Uh, that uh, that he has been uh, uh, planting and 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 and, uh, and nurturing uh, uh, in his ministry. So uh, we just went through a, a special section, as as I mentioned, from verse one to verse uh, sixteen. Uh, a beautiful uh, section to see the rich and very intimate and very dynamic, rich, resourceful fellowship in the church uh, with the Apostle Paul in his ministry. Uh, we, uh, we we say that uh, this kind of friendship and partnership and fellowship uh, is what make possible a ministry and life in the church, uh, and it is uh, not possible in the world apart from Christ. It is a bond that uh, that the world knows nothing about. It is it is the evidence of those who belong to Christ that Christ Himself said, to "Love one another." By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And, and, and Paul calls that out also in, in Romans 12, verse 9, that let love be without hypocrisy, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And, uh, and we see that again uh, as uh, love is uh, uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit uh, and it is uh, to, uh, to be uh, uh, lived out in our community, uh, in our midst. So, uh, so uh, to, to, to have our names written down, and uh, with a uh, special relationship with one another in, uh, in, in the church uh, and in the love of Christ uh, is, is something our heart uh, uh, long for and we want to experience that uh, uh, in, uh, in, in our own walk uh, with the Lord and with, with one another. So the mention of all the churches, as, as, as Paul said, all the churches of Christ with you, uh, the mention of other churches uh, causes Paul to be concerned about false uh, teachers, false teaching, who follow uh, Paul everywhere uh, uh, and sabotage and, and disrupt the churches that he has uh, he has established. So that prompted Paul to take uh, a detour from greeting to uh, to insert uh, some appropriate uh, one in from uh, 17 to 20, uh, which we will take up in the next point uh, uh, in the next moment. 
but uh, I want to, uh, to, uh, to drop down to, uh, to verse 21 and, and, and finish up the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the section of, of, of the greetings, but uh, this time from Paul's compa uh, companion. Uh, so verse, uh, verse 21 uh, to, uh, uh, to 23. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you, and, do, uh, and so do Lucius and Jason and uh, Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, uh, Tertius, uh, who write this letter, greet you in the Lord. Uh, Gaius, uh, host, uh, host to me and to the whole church, greet you. Eratus, the uh, city treasurer, greet you. And uh, Quartus, the brother. Uh, so, uh, as, uh, as uh, Paul uh, has the habit of, uh, of passing on the greetings from fellow workers uh, to the local churches uh, or to, to those uh, who he write to, and so he continued to do that, and he uh, first identified Timothy as, uh, Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. Now, we are talking about relationships, so, so, uh, so when Paul mentioned Timothy, uh, it uh, dropped the whole history uh, in relationship with him. Uh, the, Timothy was uh, uh, probably a beloved child in the faith. He, 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 he called him that, that name when he writes to him. Uh, he, uh, he is uh, number one disciple, his dear friend, and, 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 and Paul said, I, I have no one uh, of the same spirit uh, in connection to the work of the gospel like Timothy. And when uh, Paul mentioned Timothy, he connects to 30 years of friendship, 30 years of relationship, uh, through thick and thin, ups and downs, all the persecution, all the hardship. Timothy was native of Lystra, and joined Paul's ministry team at the beginning of the second missionary journey in Acts 16, and they served together until Paul is martyr, and that's 30-some years together. And Timothy's important can, can be measured by the fact that Paul introduces him as co-author of six of his letters in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. And, and his affection uh, to Timothy is, is well known. Uh, and, uh, and the relationship between Paul and Timothy is certainly a model for all of those who are in the church, especially uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in church leadership. So, for example, in uh, 1 Corinthians ch chapter 4, uh, verse 16, Paul wrote that, Therefore I exhort you to be imitators of me. For this reason I have sent you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, and he will remind, me, uh, he will remind you of my ways which are in Christ, just as I teach everywhere in uh, every church. So Timothy is my beloved, is a faithful child in the Lord. He knows me. He knows my teaching. He knows the way which I in Christ. So he's from here uh, very intimately involved in the teaching of, of God's truth. And, uh, and he will teach you as I teach you everywhere in, in, in the church. And we read this before, but uh, the emotion and the trust and the appreciation uh, from Paul to Timothy bears repeating uh, for the Paul, Paul is making this point. And as we hear, we, uh, we, we, uh, we long for this kind of, uh, of, of comments, uh, especially, you know, uh, from, from God's word, and saying that, uh, that men are proven, proven worth. In, in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 19, starting, uh, Paul said that, I hope to, uh, in the Lord Jesus, to send Timothy to you shortly, so that I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for you, for your welfare, for they all seek after their own interests, not uh, of Christ Jesus. But you know of his proven worth, that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel, like a child serving his father. Uh, that uh, we live in the church uh, and in the, in the ministry service, and uh, it can be said of us uh, that people uh, the church know of, of our proven worth in the ministry. Uh, that that would be uh, the, 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 the the that would be uh, the great reward in itself. And then uh, and then he and then uh, Paul said and another uh, send uh, you love and that is from Lu uh, Lucius. Uh, and we can be sure uh, who Lucius uh, is, but we can have some uh, actually two options. 
When Paul first started out his, his ministry in Antioch, uh, we read in uh, Acts 13 that one of the five men who was leading the, the church in Antioch was Lucius of Cyrene. Uh, and maybe it is him uh, that uh, Lucius, uh, who started out in the church of Antioch, continued in relationship with Paul and, uh, and now come, uh, actually uh, went to Corinth uh, to join him. He's a longtime friend and fellow teacher of Antioch, and that's certainly possible. There's another option, and that could be Luke, uh, the author of uh, the Gospel of Luke and the, and the book of Acts. Since uh, Luke was with Paul at this time in Corinth, uh, in chapter 20 of Acts, uh, when Luke writes, he, he used the word we, so he talked about uh, uh, he being in the same team in, uh, in companionship, uh, uh, in company with, uh, with Paul at that time. So he was uh, with Paul as he wrote this letter uh, to, uh, to Rome. So maybe Lucius is, uh, is Luke, and it's very reasonable because whenever, uh, actually three times when Paul named Luke, uh, he used uh, the, the, the word Lucas, and that's simply an equivalent to Lucius. And so we, we, we can see that it might be uh, the beloved physician and companion of Paul, Dr. Luke, and he sent his love as well. You know, just uh, some of these details, even though it's just facts, it, it points out to relationship, long-time commitment, uh, all the effort, all the love, all the, uh, uh, just uh, the whole history of, of, of people living in the church, uh, serving in the church, uh, go through all the hardship and, and pain and joy and, 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 and uh, blessing together. And it is uh, creating us a deep uh, yearning for that kind of, of, of relationship to, to have in the church. And then Paul adds, uh, and Jason, uh, and Sarsi Peter, my kinsman. We know these two men were, would be Jews be, uh, and could be relatives of Paul because he said uh, they are uh, his uh, kinsmen. Now we know uh, from Acts uh, 17 that uh, Jason was Paul uh, host when he uh, when he, when he came from the Thessalonica to Corinth, uh, and he suffered uh, uh, for hosting Paul because uh, when Paul was in his house, the, the mob went for uh, went after Paul, and they came to Jason's house, and Paul somehow was not there, so they beat up Jason and attacked his house instead. We read that in Acts 17, just again to see the the, the relationship and the and the, uh, the the partnership that they have together in service. Uh, starting verse 5. But the Jews becoming jealous and taking along some wicked men from the marketplace form a mob and set the city in an uproar and attacking the house of Jason and they uh, were seeking to bring them out uh, to the people when they did not find them they began dragging Jason and some brethren before the city authority shouting these men who have upset the world have come here also and Jason has welcomed them and they all act contrary to the degrees of Caesar, saying that there's another king, Jesus. And so we, we know that Jason has to post bail and pay a large amount of money to be released by, by the authorities. And this incident was so bad, uh, I guess, uh, for Jason and for those who are in the, in the city, uh, that uh, that very night the church uh, had to send Paul away in the middle of the night. And, and so Paul and Jason has uh, some history together. There's love bond uh, be, uh, between them, and and now uh, uh, years later, Jason is still with Paul, and uh, and say hello. Uh, now, uh, Sasi Perry uh, is uh, uh, is from the town Berea, and uh, as if you recall, the Christians in Berea were famous for one thing, and that is uh, in uh, Acts uh, seventeen eleven. Now these were more mobile minded than those in, uh, in Thessalonica, for they received the word with great earnestness, uh, with great eagerness, examined scripture daily to see whether these things were so. So they were known, uh, the, the Bereans are known that they check uh, scripture, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for all those who, who come to teach them to see if they are consistent with, uh, uh, with the biblical truth. So uh, Sosie Peter uh, was probably one of those uh, noble uh, students who study the scripture and he was in Paul's group at this time. Uh, we don't know what his ministry is but we know uh, as with Timothy and, and Jason uh, he belonged to the circle of friends uh, with Paul and were part of his life and they demonstrate again the love and relationship that he had with the people. 
Now verse 22 is, is also special in, in that uh, I, the Tertius, uh, who read this letter, greet you in the Lord. Now uh, we don't know anything else uh, uh, about this man, but we know that he's, uh, he's the one that wrote down what Paul dictated uh, for him uh, for the book of Romans. Uh, uh, so uh, perhaps uh, toward the end, Paul, 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 Paul just turned to uh, uh, to Titius and say, "Why don't you say something to the church in Rome?" And so he he put down, you know, one line here. Uh, but it is also telling us that uh, that everybody has a place. Timothy, a co-labor with uh, with Paul, Jason was uh, there for support and uh, and, and, and companionship. Uh, Susie Peter was there for. Uh, whatever reason and purpose God had for him, and this uh, is uh, and, and this secretary uh, who could write this wonderful uh, uh, Roman epistle, and what a privilege uh, that is to to be able to write uh, the eternal word of God to the church, uh, and the fact that he greeted them in the Lord is a way that the Holy Spirit shows that everyone has a place and function in the work of the Lord in the church. Now verse uh, 23 wraps up the greeting, uh, Guy is my host, uh, uh, host to me and, 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 and to the whole church, uh, and Guy is greet you. Uh, Guy is a common name, and uh, we, uh, we, 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 we know of three men with the same name in the New Testament, uh, but, uh, but he, uh, uh, this guy is, is certainly Guy of Corinth, uh, and he lived next door to the synagogue in, in, in Corinth, uh, and so when Paul went to the synagogue and, and, and taught there for some time and he was rejected by the Jews in the synagogue, he actually went next door to Gaius' house and set up a church there. So it's a very interesting dynamic. So, so from the synagogue next door, he said, okay, you rejected me, I'll just form the church uh, next here so those who come to the synagogue can just go to the next, uh, next house. I wonder what kind of dynamics they have, but they certainly uh, have it for a long time. So this, this man, God has provided for, for Paul in, in his ministry and now continue to do so to support him. He's not only Paul's host, but the host for the whole church. So two more person uh, in Paul's team at Corinth uh, say hello. Erastus, the city uh, treasurer, greets you, and Quartus, the brother. One is probably well known, Erastus, and one is uh, certainly unknown, and Quartus. Now, now, Eratus, uh, the city treasurer, is uh, certainly a man of prominence, uh, the treasurer of the city. Uh, but but uh, Paul also mentioned him uh, as a part of the team in Corinth, and so he could be the same Eratus uh, that Paul sent from Ephesus to Macedonia uh, during the third ministry, uh, uh, the, the third missionary journey uh, that's in Act 19. And in uh, 2 Timothy uh, 4, uh, it's mentioned that uh, Eratus uh, remains in Corinth. Now, it's very interesting that in 1929, uh, on the side at Corinth, a marble uh, piece uh, was, was, was discovered, and uh, it has uh, the, the inscriptions, Eratus, commissioner of the public works, laid this payment at his own expense. Uh, now the commissioner of public works is called Eratus, and here the city treasurer is called Eratus. It might be a, the same person uh, as uh, different stages in his public life. Maybe he got a promotion uh, to treasurer from commissioner from public works. But uh, that must be a very uh, interesting relationship to, to have a very prominent person in the government who is also serving on, uh, on your missionary team, uh, serving the churches. It certainly fit the bivocational model that Paul is, uh, is living himself and, and practicing with his team. Uh, but uh, it indicates, uh, again, that no matter where you are, uh, there is a place for you in the church. Everybody has a place, everybody has a function, everybody has a ministry. And that's probably uh, why Paul uh, have a totally unknown person wrap up this section of greetings. He said, and, and Quartus, the brother, greets you. Now, Quartus is uh, not known anywhere else in the New Testament. Uh, he, just, uh, uh, he is identified here as a fellow believer, a brother of the team, uh, a brother in the team. But, uh, but we certainly know this, that uh, Quartus is not one that is lukewarm and lazy and immature person. 
uh, you know, sitting in the Korean church, sucking his thumb during uh, worship service. Uh, because Paul wouldn't put a person like that in the team. So we don't know about Quartus and his ministry, but uh, we, we can assume and presume uh, with certainty, uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with confidence that he loves the Lord, he loves the church, he loves Paul. He's serving the team in his unique capacity and gift in, and Paul and, and, uh, and indeed the Holy Spirit deems it's important to let the church in Rome know that Quartus, the brother, greets you. Uh, it just warms my heart to, 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 to see that kind of communion uh, and communication and, and relationship that is in the church. So, so Paul is writing from the church with love uh, to, uh, to, uh, to those who are in Romans. And, uh, and, 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 and we, uh, we certainly emphasize the fact that everybody has a place, everybody has a function, everybody has a ministry in the church. And ministry is done in the context of love and relationships in the church. It's certainly that, it, 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 is, it is certain that there can be no ministry without the church, outside the church or disconnected to the church. But it is equally certain that there is little work done in the church without relationships or without love. So, 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 so the, the, we have the list of, 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 of all the greetings and you know, the people there expressing love and relationship in the church. So, so we now move to the second point and, and that is uh, exhorting love and cautions to the church. Paul loves the church and uh, he's the model expressing love to the church uh, as we just uh, saw in this section. Uh, but love is also expressing warning of, 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 of dangers. Uh, the mention uh, of all the churches give, give Paul uh, uh, a pause to express concern and, and to issue some serious warnings and cautions to the church in Rome uh, and to the churches in our history under, uh, under scripture. Uh, so we start with verse uh, 17 uh, with the first point and, and, and that is uh, uh, exhorting love and caution to the church and he's calling uh, uh, the, the, the church to, to, to be avoiding divisive worldly people and then he come back and, uh, and say he's rejoicing over the obedience and wisdom that is uh, in the churches and he called for a life of anticipation the, the final victory that is in Christ. Uh, Let's look at 17 and 18. Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learn and turn away from them. For such men are slaves not of our Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetites, and by their smooth and flattering speech they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. So the first one and tell us uh, we need to be avoiding decisive, uh, divisive and worldly people. Now, in, in, uh, under this point, I'll be using the term false teachers a lot. Uh, for they are the group that connected to uh, the division in the church and the attacks against Paul. Uh, but here Paul includes all people at different areas uh, in the church who cause division and bring worldly influence into the church. So it, can, it doesn't mean that, you, that just the, uh, the teachers, but anybody who fit the description, uh, as Paul said, I urge you, brethren, keep your eyes on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you've learned. Now, there's a lot of warnings uh, in, 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 in Scripture and warnings uh, for the church to, uh, to respond to. And so before we get to the specific of the text at hand in Romans 16, I'd like to zoom out a little bit uh, and make connections to one in, in scriptures, uh, to the church in general, uh, because uh, one is a part uh, of, of the ministry, one is, uh, is a part of love, uh, and, and the Apostle Paul is certainly speaking the word of one is here out of the heart of love, uh, because uh, as uh, we love uh, somebody, we have the zeal for the safety and prosperity and blessedness for that person. Uh, and, and so it's not surprised that we see Paul uh, demonstrated here uh, the, uh, the love uh, uh, through the warnings and cautions to the church. Now Paul's love for the church and for the leaders of the church uh, uh, is clearly seen in many places, but especially in Acts 20 when he speaks urgently uh, the warnings to the elder from emphasis. Uh, let me just read that in Acts chapter 20. 
verse 28 to 31. He said, Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flocks among whom, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be on the alert, remembering that night and day for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one of you with tears. So, so, so there's a lot here, but uh, Paul is saying that uh, that for uh, that with tears for three years, night and day, he had been warning them uh, uh, and and call them to pay attention to the attack that might come among them, uh, and and so that certainly uh, show his love for the church and his concern for the church, and. Uh, <laughs> And love has zeal uh, that warns and cautions uh, be, be, <laughs> because that's just the, just the nature of, uh, of love. In Christ's ministry, uh, we, we see also the, uh, that he engaged in a lot of warnings. Uh, he warns people against the danger that they're facing under the wrath of God. And the group that received the most warnings from the Lord is the, is the Pharisees, the scribes, the religious leaders. They are in great danger of going the wrong way with God, and and the, uh, and and in the process, they also lead people into the, uh, into uh, into destruction. Uh, Matthew seven is uh, is one area that uh, that Jesus level a lot of warning uh, against them, calling them for uh, to 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 face the reality of their life. Uh, Matthew seven uh, fifteen. Beware of the false prophets who come uh, to you in sheep growth, clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes and are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good, good, fruit, uh, good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruit. And so, so here we will see in a moment uh, Paul's explanation of that. We will know the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, false, uh, the false teachers, uh, those who are enemies uh, of the church by their fruit. Uh, now, Paul pointed out that, uh, that it's not that easy uh, to, to, to discern uh, uh, we, because the enemy is uh, is uh, is, uh, is very resourceful, uh, Paul said that, uh, that that the false uh, uh, the, the false apostles, uh, the false teachers, uh, post as uh, servants of righteousness, and and appear like angels of light, uh, and cause much damage in the church. He said so in Second uh, Corinthians chapter eleven. He said, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. So, uh, so that's why the warning is necessary and, and discernment is, uh, is required. Uh, because if we don't know the truth, we won't be able to uh, to distinguish uh, Satan as he disguises himself as an angel of light, and his servants uh, disguises themselves as servants of righteousness. Uh, Sometimes we, you know, we li we listen to, uh, to to a message proclaim, uh, a Bible study share, uh, or we read a book, and if we don't know Scripture, uh, we won't uh, be able to distinguish uh, from the uh, from from the false prophet. Uh, so, so, so Paul is calling out for us to understand that. Uh, now, uh, there's a lot of one in 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 in, 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 in Scripture. The Apostle Peter devoted uh, most of uh, the second uh, uh, the second Peter uh, um, uh, to one against the false teacher. Uh, Jude uh, devoted the whole letter uh, to the same theme, and uh, and. Uh, and Paul, in his final charge to Timothy, is telling him to preach a word, and he explained that people lend themselves to the influence of false teachers because uh, they, they, they want to hear what they want to hear. 
and, and, and so it's not just, uh, just a false teacher, it, it, it is the waywardness of the people in the church. Uh, Paul said in 2 Timothy verse, uh, four, uh, chapter 4, verse uh, 3 to 4, he said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickle, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myth. I think that's certainly the description of, our, uh, uh, of the churches in our time, uh, that, uh, that uh, people want to have their ears tickled, they want to hear what they want to hear, they want to be told that all is well, that, uh, that they can have the best life uh, now, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, the important things of, uh, of life is to have self-actualization. I hear that word, and I can't figure out what, what it means, but it's good to say self-actualization it sounds important uh, but, uh, but but that is uh, deceit and uh, people will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myth so so so, so Paul is calling uh, for attention to that and let's go back to our, to our verse in 17 uh, verse 17 so as I, I now I urge you brethren keep your eye on those who cause dissension and hindrance contrary to the teaching which you have learned so, so, so Paul started out with a very strong appeal. He said, I urge you, and, and, and he's talking to, uh, to the people in the church, so he's, he's talking to believers, uh, and, and, and he will be moving uh, uh, to help us, uh, to, to help the church to recognize the false teacher and how to respond to, uh, to false teaching when we encounter them. But he's saying that, now I beg you, I urge you, I beseech you, I plead, uh, uh, with you out of my heart. Uh, that's, the, that's the sense of urgency that he's uh, uh, coming across here, something that he feels very deeply in his soul. Uh, and uh, the same attitude we, 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 we saw on the positive side in, uh, in chapter 12 when he, he, when he pleaded for commitment to the will of God and the separation from the world and total dedication. He said, I urge you, brethren, you know, give yourself as a living sacrifice to, to, the, to, 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 to God, that is, uh, the, your spiritual uh, uh, sacrifice of worship. So here Paul is uh, pleading uh, 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 for attention for, uh, for, 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 for the people in the church to, uh, to focus on, uh, on the danger that, that, that come in their way or, or probably already in their midst. So first of all, Paul is, uh, is telling us how to recognize false teachers. Uh, how to recognize false teacher? Uh, you, you have to uh, know what to look for uh, to, to, to spot them. And, and, and they probably have not arrived, uh, not, not by force in Rome yet, so he's giving them, uh, giving the church a heads up, so when they arrive, the believers could uh, be able to spot them. And Paul lists four marks uh, uh, to identify false teacher. Uh, so to recognize uh, the false teacher, number one, we watch their motives. Number two, we watch their message. Number three, we watch their master or who they uh, belong to. And number four, we watch their methods. So first, let's look at their motives. And the motives is causing dissension and stumbling blocks. And, and, and that is uh, when they promote themselves uh, by causing the dissension and stumbling blocks. Uh, he said, I urge you, brethren, keep your eyes on those who cause dissension and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learn. The, the core mode of operation of our teachers is to cause division and then take advantage uh, of uh, the divisions for their own selfish gain. Uh, and, 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 and so Paul said, uh, you, you, you keep an eye on those. Now first let me mention that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the division and, uh, and con con controversy and conf confrontation is not uh, that we, we, we are to avoid them at all costs at all time. Uh, some confrontation is necessary and, uh, and needed. Uh, Jesus himself uh, uh, provoked a lot of dissension by confronting, you know, the hypocrisy of the the of, of the uh, of the leaders at the time, uh, and he went after false teacher and leaders, and he said that there cannot be any peace. Uh, the, he said that you think I'm coming to give you peace? No, I'm coming to give you conflict. It's just a sword. Uh, and Matthew 23 uh, is the whole chapter of Jesus declaring woes 
upon the uh, false teachers. Uh, so there's a great confrontation uh, in his ministry. Paul also contended uh, vigorously uh, with the the with the Jew, uh, uh, with, 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 with the Jews in Galatians uh, on the different gospel when they were pressing on uh, that on the church. Uh, he even uh, kind of. He even con uh, confronted Peter publicly uh, because uh, Peter has come under the sway uh, of the Judaizer and did not stand up for the gospel under the pressure of, of this group. So when the gospel uh, or, or, or the core biblical truth was at stake, uh, was at stake Paul believed uh, that it is necessary uh, to contend strongly for the faith. And actually when he looked into his own ministry, uh, he, uh, he summed up his entire ministry as a big fight. So he said, I fought a good fight. So Paul was not opposed to, uh, to, uh, uh, to controversy uh, when the gospel was at stake. But here he is, he, he's talking about those who, who, who bring division into the church and, uh, and, and, and so stumbling blocks into the church. Uh, and take advantage of that and, 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 and bring in destruction to the church. So Paul said that false teachers are divisive people, those who call dissensions and hindrances, and this is the fundamental characteristic. Now dissension uh, is, uh, is a word for oppositions, disagreements, discords, rebellions, and it is a word that Paul used uh, um, uh, the, that uh, we got the translation dissension uh, is uh, the deed of the flesh that he listed out in, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 20. So, so he, there he said, now the deeds of the flesh are evident with uh, immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, fractions, and then he, he lists on and on, and he said, uh, uh, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So he said, uh, dissensions um, is an expression of those who uh, are enemies of the church. They uh, will not uh, see the kingdom of God, but they, they are seeking to, uh, to destroy the church. And it stems from the self-centered, uh, self-exalted motive. Uh, for our teachers uh, uh, love to promote themselves and they are after power, fame, money, uh, uh, sex, and, and they don't aim to exalt Christ. They, uh, they are all about themselves and, uh, and so uh, they take advantage uh, when there are dissensions and disunity and problems in the church. And they also uh, uh, so, uh, cause hindrances and the word is scandal, or stumbling blocks, uh, obstacle, things that cause offense. So the work uh, and the life of the false teacher will always involve scandals, uh, uh, and uh, it will be a stumbling block uh, to, uh, to those who follow them. Uh, so, so when Paul said stumbling block, he showed that these men created dissension by, by wrong teaching, by, by manipulation of, uh, of, of the people in, in, uh, in the church. Uh, and, and the result was, uh, was uh, the uh, disunity in the church and, uh, and the breakdown of fellowship in the church. So, 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 so the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the identification mark for the four teachers uh, that uh, they are those who cause dissension and hindrances. <laughs> Now that's certainly and absolutely not something any of us want to be known for. You know, we we we, we don't want to be known as uh, as you know the difficult person or the, the one who uh, caused dissension and, and hindrances in the church. Uh, so we have to be uh, watchful for that. Now, secondly, Paul said, uh, watch their message because they they are teaching wrong doctrine. Uh, the message of false teacher is contradict to core biblical truth. Paul said, keep your eye on those who cause dissension and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned. So he, he, he identified false teachers as those who teach false doctrine uh, and create division. Uh, and, uh, and that's what a false teacher does. He teaches uh, something that's different than the truth and creates division, discord, uh, and uh, causing uh, stumbling blocks, uh, bringing stumbling blocks into the church. 
Now the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 word stumbling block is the word uh, scandalizo, which which is uh, uh, things that bring offense. So so uh, so their teaching will 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 will, will, cre will create uh, disunity in the church and problems in the church. Now, part of their message was contrary to the teaching which you learned. Uh, so Paul uh, re referred to the truth of the gospel, especially in the book of the Romans that he just wrote down for the people uh, that he has set forth so clearly in this, uh, in, in, in this epistle. Uh, and, 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 and we note that, uh, that there are many doctrines uh, that is core uh, to the Christian faith, that if you don't have unity in uh, in this doctrine you are not christian uh, doctrine of uh, salvation doctrine of justification uh, doctrine of christ alone uh, 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 you know uh, the, 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 the 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 work of, of, of the holy spirit and the, the authority and uh, of, uh, of god's word uh, uh, all those are core doctrine where all true Christians must agree or you cease to be Christian in, in any biblical sense of the word. Now there are some, uh, some secondary issues that there may be some, uh, some discussion but Paul is talking about uh, the truth that you have learned uh, contrary to the teaching which you have learned uh, and, 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 and that is uh, the, uh, the, the, the teaching that he has provided uh, in in his own ministry and, and also in, in the letters that he sent out to the churches which uh, form uh, the, uh, the, the New Testament, uh, the scripture that, as, 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 as we know. So, so as we come to the cult or uh, uh, to false teaching, uh, they always promote a way of salvation by works that, uh, the, uh, that, uh, that uh, undermines the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so Paul is calling uh, attention to that. Now, in implying this, uh, he said, uh, the teaching which you learn. So he assumed that we know the core uh, beliefs, that, that, we, we, that uh, we, we, we as a church know scripture, uh, that we know the right doctrine, and when we hear the wrong doctrine, we will understand and we will see. So, 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 he, so he said that anything that contrary to the teaching which you learn. And so it is our responsibility to know the truth. It is our responsibility uh, to, to know uh, the, uh, the right teaching uh, and when the wrong teaching come along uh, we will know for sure. It, it's just like you know the, 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 the old standard how do, you, how do you tell the counterfeit money from the real one? Well y you don't have to study all the details of what's wrong you just have to study what is right and anything that is different from, from the right one, the true one then you know that it's wrong. The, 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 the second from the church is that you know, a, lot of, a lot of time people don't even know what the right one looks like, what the right doctrine is, what the biblical thing is. And so Paul calling us, uh, saying that, that, uh, that uh, you, you, you need to know the, the teaching that we have uh, revealed to you from, from God's word, which you learn. So there's a process of learning. Uh, and, and, and and then the comparison to the, to anything that go, go counter to that. Now Paul is also bringing another aspect, and, and he said uh, the master uh, for 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 the false teacher is their own appetite; it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse uh, 18: For such men are slaves, not of our Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetite, and by the smooth and flattering speech they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. For such men are slaves. Uh, so Paul said the mark of the false teacher is that they serve themselves. They are slaves and they serve a master. They do the will of the master. They are under control of the master. But that master is not the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not their Lord. They don't submit to him. They don't carry out his will. They don't live for his purpose. If he was their master, they would do all these things for him, but uh, contrary, their master is their own desire, their own fleshly ambition, their own appetite. And their belly is their God, as we, we, we have that word from Paul in, 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 in Philippians. Uh, they submit to their own want. Uh, they do their own will. They live for their own purpose. Uh, they are lovers of self, and they do everything for themselves. Now, uh, 
uh, when when we say false teacher and and those who oppose the gospel, uh, you know, we we can very easily sh sh you know shrug our shoulders and say certainly that's not me. But 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 when we hear the description of them that that. Um, that uh, they don't uh, live for the Lord, they don't submit to Him, they don't live for His purpose. Uh, they uh, they go for their desire, their own desire, and, and their own ambition, uh, and their own want, and their own will, and their own purposes. Uh, it hit closer to home uh, so for us to really examine our uh, our, uh, our motives and our uh, value system. Now. Uh, Paul uh, is, is saying that the danger from those who live for themselves is that the church is very susceptible to, uh, to such worldly, uh, worldly influence. So those who live for themselves, you know, they, maybe they just uh, successful at uh, the things that they do. They seem to enjoy life. They, 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 they seem to have the, 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 the lifestyle, even though focused on themselves, but very attractive to, to those around them. You know, the... Uh, the, uh, the, the, the culture of our time is, is to really watch and follow those who are successful. Their shows and their programs, and, uh, you know, make millions and millions just because people like to follow those who are successful. And, 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 and Paul saying that, uh, that the church is very susceptible to such worldly uh, influence. And, and Paul uh, warns about uh, these people sneak into the church and, and influence the church from within. Uh, in Second uh, Timothy chapter three, uh, verse one to three, uh, verse one to five, Paul said, "Realize this: that in the last day, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revi re revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, ir irreconcilable, malicious, gossip, without self-control, hater of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure." love of pleasure rather than lovers of God, hold into a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, and avoid such men as these. So, 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 so Paul kind of sum up uh, 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 the characteristic of those uh, uh, who have belonged to the world in, in, in their love. Uh, men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God and they're holding the form of godliness, uh, although they have denied its power. Uh, and, and so, uh, how do we live out our love, and who's the focus of our love, and, 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 and how that uh, show the, the value system in, 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 in our heart is, is very clear. So, so Paul said, uh, what, 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 what do you do with them? He said, avoid such men as these. So, so Paul identified false teachers, those who, who teach false doctrine and create division. Um, false teachers are, are doing their work for their own profit and for their own gain. Uh, false teachers uh, love themselves and, and, and do everything for themselves. Uh, so, uh, so the pattern of, uh, of, uh, of this is not just for false uh, teachers. Uh, but uh, Paul warned the church in, in, in Philippians chapter 3. We learned it uh, last time in our Philippians series. Uh, but it's uh, scary every time we read this. Uh, because he's, he's not talking about people on the street and, and uh, you know, down going to temples and worship uh, idols. He's talking about those who are in the church, call themselves Christians. And, and if you ask them, they say, sure, I'm a believer. Sure, I have got baptized. But he said this, for many walk, uh, of whom I often told you and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, whose glory is their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. That's exactly what he's, he's talking about, you know, keeping eyes on those uh, who cause dissension and hindrance contrary to the teaching which you learned. He said, for such men are slaves, not that our Lord Jesus, but their own appetites, by their own smooth and fat speech, they deceive the heart of the unsuspecting. So, so if you just live for yourself, if, if your desire is, is, is what drives you, if your own will is what you go after, uh, if you live for your own purposes, uh, then Paul said uh, uh, that you are the enemies of the cross. 
and the enemies of the church. That uh, that certainly you know put uh, uh, put your hair on on uh, on its end as we read this and and uh, we we certainly have the 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 assurance the assurance of God's grace and the operation of the work of the Holy Spirit in us that we, that 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 we we. we, we that we don't just uh, look at our faith with uncertainty all the time, but it calls to be self-examination here uh, every time we come to this text to, to see if, uh, if, if any resemblance or anything like this uh, even exists in, in, in our life. Whose God is their appetite? Whose glory is their shame? Who set their mind on earthly things? Just that fact, you know, set their minds on earthly things. Uh, you know the the eternal things, uh, the 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 the, uh, the purpose of the kingdom. Uh, if if it's not in our mind, if it's not in our purpose, guess what group we what group we belong to. So 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 Paul said, watch out, and sometimes the watching out is is looking into the mirror and say, I recognize this person in terms of these descriptions that I need to be aware of. And he said about, about the method here, he said, uh, deceived by smooth talks. The method of the false teacher is to use smooth and flattering speech to deceive the hearts uh, of the unsuspecting. Uh, so, they, so Paul said, the mark of false teacher is that they are deceivers. False teachers are, are, are actually, uh, a lot of time, are very nice. They're likable, they're winsome. I mean, uh, that's, that's the trademark. Uh, they, they have to be attractive to, to those who are looking for these things. And they flatter you by telling you what you want to hear. Uh, I think they smile a lot when they talk. Uh, somehow that come across. Uh, and they tell you how great you are and uh, how you can have your best life now. And, uh, you know, there are places where 30,000 of people gather on Sunday and listen to this kind of crap. They don't talk anything of uh, negative like sin or, or coming judgment. Uh, they say something like, you know, people are beat down enough as it is uh, during the week. When they come to church, they need to hear a positive message like God's love and acceptance. Uh, and obviously, apart from repentance and away from sin. And they use biblical verses, a lot of time out of context. They use the biblical language, but they often change the meaning of the term. And Paul said, their purpose is to deceive, that they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. So they, they use good words, they use a smooth speech, uh, and, 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 and certainly they, they are eloquent in the way that they talk. Uh, Paul used the word uh, uh, that, uh, that we translate uh, uh, into the, uh, the, the eulogy, uh, and, and that is uh, normally when we talk with eloquence uh, and, 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 and say the best about somebody after he died. Uh, so the idea here is, is that uh, they are using false eloquence, uh, flattery, well-chosen lies, uh, and they are very clever, very eloquent, very smooth talking. They bring praise and, uh, and, and encouragement and they gain the ears and deceive the heart. So, <clears throat> so note that the deception is taking place on the heart level. Uh, which refers to both the, 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 the mind and the emotions. So the deceivers know how to manipulate people's feelings. And so if, if you are into this kind of, uh, if you respond to this kind of talk, uh, be careful uh, because uh, it's very easily uh, ma ma manipulated. And you know, I don't consider myself as uh, as one easily manipulated. But one time, I was sitting and listening to uh, to a man talking, and he tells story in such a way that's so moving, so compelling. I, I see tears coming into my eyes, and then I stop and I say, what, "Why are you responding to this? He's telling crap. You know, he's, he doesn't talking about any truth. But just the way he tells the story, you you, you just move and." And, and then we, 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 we realize that how, how easy it is to be manipulated, uh, especially when you know, they, they, they know the path into your heart through your feelings. So they appeal to greed and, and desire that we have to be healthy, uh, that uh, we want prosperity, that we want healing. So, so you see all the, the other people flocking to hear these people, you know, the, to claim healing, to claim prosperity, to claim health. 
uh, and preying on your feelings, they lure you into the web of deception. And that's why Paul stayed clear from human wisdom, from smooth talks and eloquence to give people what they want to hear. He is determined to stay true to the message of the cross of Christ, the charisma of the gospel. He says so very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. And, and this is very instructive uh, because if anybody who's able to talk and able to, to put up a, uh, you know, a, 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 uh, a, 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 an, an eloquent presentation, Paul can. He's, he, he probably have the equivalent of five PhDs. He's the smartest man that we know. But he said that when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech, or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And as I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in, de in, de in demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. So, so Paul is very, uh, very clear. He said there's a way to create response. And people do, uh, do, do, uh, do, uh, do respond to eloquence and, and, uh, and smooth talk. And, and they can uh, feel the change and they can feel the response, but that's all, uh, it's only on human's wisdom. So, so he said, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to stick to the message of Christ and him crucified, even though, you know, according to you, I, I appear in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my, my, my sermons are not per persuasive words of wisdom, but uh, I leave that all uh, to the Holy Spirit because I don't want your faith to rest on the wisdom of man. I want it to be transformed by the power of God. So it's also a choice for us who you listen to, how you listen to, what you're longing for, because you certainly will find people who talk your language, talk what you want to hear, uh, tickle your ears, there are many of those. But Paul said, not human wisdom, not the mere touch of man, not to persuade people on human level, to influence them for a time and manipulate them for earthly purpose. Not come with superiority of speech or wisdom, but I determined to know nothing among you except Christ Jesus and him crucified. I mean, it's a strange thing to go through the list of, of, of greetings for three weeks in a row, and maybe four, as we're not finishing up today. And not, not many places that, that, that we are able to do that. And I think we are committed to, to, the, uh, to, the, the, to the word and let the text speak because we believe that your faith should not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God and he speak through his word as he reveal. So, so here we, we say we recognize for our teacher, watch their motives, their message and their master and their methods. And I'm running out of time. Let, let, let me just uh, take one more point, and then uh, and then we'll uh, and then we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll pray to respond. And and that is that uh, Paul is also pointing out to respond to the false teacher. Paul Paul show how to respond to false teacher here. He, he said that keep your eye on them and turn away from them. Back to verse uh, 17. Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eyes on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learn and turn away from them. So he said, number one, keep your eye on those. Uh, keep your eye on them and turn away from them. Uh, so the, 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 the word is to mark it, and the word is where we get the word uh, scope. It's uh, scopio, and it says to identify that, uh, looking through the scope, making sure that you understand the, the distinctives, Observe it, uh, scrutinize it, identify it, pick it out, see what it is. So, so you have to be able to, 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 to see the errors, uh, but, uh, but, but, but then you, do, you, but then you, uh, uh, you turn away from them. Now the, 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 the noun related to the verb keep an eye on is used in Ezekiel uh, for the, the watchman on the wall. His job was to keep an eye uh, peeled for the enemy and, uh, and sound the, the alarm when he saw them coming. So this is uh, the, the, the same idea that the Paul said, to watch out for them, see if they're coming, and then identify them uh, and, uh, and then avoid them. Uh, and so, 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 so again, he, uh, we, 
we mentioned that false teachers often come disguise themselves as servant of righteousness, uh, as wolves in sheep clothing at the uh, end of life. So you have to be discerning to spot them. But then having spotted them, what do you do? You turn away and you stay away. Uh, this is uh, very important to observe. What do you do when you come across the false teaching? Uh, do you uh, uh, dialogue? Do you debate? Do, uh, do you discuss? Now Paul doesn't tell us to engage in dialogue with them or to invite them into your house or to your church and find some common ground uh, to discuss their ideas. You know, uh, sometimes division or separation is both necessary and the godly thing to do. And, and, and as, uh, as, as, uh, as, as, uh, as Christian leaders, we especially have to be very careful about this. For example, there's a strong movement uh, for, uh, for, even, uh, for evangelicals and Roman Catholics uh, to join together to spread the love of Christ to the world. Uh, you heard about this, but it's assumed that the Roman Catholic preaches the same gospel as we preach, but they don't. They preach salvation by grace through faith plus work, and we preach salvation by work through faith alone, and, uh, and that is not a minor difference. Uh, Paul actually uh, called for damnation for the, for, for the Galatian uh, the people who preached a, the, a different gospel, so he said, let them be a curse. Uh, and he said that uh, if any man preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you have received, let him be accursed. So, so we have to be careful. Uh, you know, uh, sh should you invite uh, those who knock on your doors to come in uh, to discuss, believe, so that you might lead them to Christ. You know, you've seen them, right? They go by twos and they wear white shirt and ties. And the question is, should you talk to them? Uh, well, before you say, let's talk and lead them to Christ, be very careful. They do a better job of training their people than we do. And, uh, and they can take every verse uh, to support their errors. But uh, we're not without instruction on this. Uh, Second John, uh, verses 10 to 11. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house. And do not give him a greeting. For the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deed. So, so scriptures say, you know, don't engage, don't, 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 don't give them the opportunity to, uh, uh, to, 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 to discuss their errors. Uh, so, so we note them, we see them, and then we avoid them. So Paul said, keep your eyes on them and turn away from them. Uh, you have to stay away because the judgment of God is coming swiftly to false teachers and, and it is smarting, uh, s s smarting to do to turn away from them. Uh, uh, in Second in Peter chapter 2, uh, uh, Peter is talking about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the destruction that's coming. He said that many will follow the sensuality and because of them the way of the truth is malign. Uh, their greed will exploit you to false word, but their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. God is bringing a, a judgment uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the false teachers. So evil is contagious, and you want to stay away as, as, as far as possible. So in the church, you don't want to tolerate div uh, divisive people uh, to give them form to, uh, to show their division. Uh, you give them opportunity to repent and change, but uh, decisively to cut off uh, negative influence in the church. Uh, Titus uh, chapter 3 verse 10, reject a, f a, a fractious man after the first and second warning, knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning and self-condemned. So, so, so if, 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 if you have uh, people who sow divisions uh, in the church, uh, Paul said, get rid of them. Uh, move away from them, disassociate from them. So, so Paul is saying that stick with what you have learned and reinforce that, and and uh, and, uh, and know and and, uh, and and know the marks of the uh, of the false teacher, and know the false doctrine, and stay away from them. Now he has more to say, and, uh, and we have to come back to that in verse 19 and, 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 and 20. For the report of your obedience had reached to all, therefore I am rejoicing over you, but I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent uh, in what is evil. 
and the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. It's just marvelous truth that we're going to be able to study. But uh, but uh, for 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 the for, for the response that, uh, that we have today, uh, just uh, just again note that uh, keep your eyes on those who call dissension and hindrance contrary to the teaching which we learn, and turn away from them. Uh, so those who call dissension, uh, you know, our uh, wrong motive or our uh, uh, immature behavior, uh, we are to uh, keep an eye on them, uh, and and we are to know the uh, the teaching of Scripture so that we can distinguish what is consistent with it, what is contrary to it, uh, and then we have uh, the commitment to protect the gospel, to protect the church, uh, and to turn away from those who have. Uh, a negative influence on the church. Uh, they are called slave, uh, and and so each one of us uh, also serves some purpose and, and serve our master. For them, it's not the Lord Jesus Christ with their own appetite. It's their own belly. It's, it's their own needs. It's their own purpose. And by the smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. Uh, we have to ask the question: Who is our master? What do we live for? What is our purpose? And we have to also guard ourselves against, uh, you know, um, speech and, 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 and things that tickle our ears and uh, stir up our emotions, but without content of the truth. And we have to, to, to say to Paul that, uh, that we do nothing uh, like that because we don't want your faith to rest on the wisdom of man. We want the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you from within, from the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's ask the, ask the question, do you, know your, do you know the truth? Do you commit to the truth? Do you recognize the voice of the shepherd? And, and when you do, rejoice and, and, and pursue more, more, you know, more time for the word, more commitment to the word, and, uh, and, 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 and may your tribe increase. On, on the other side, if, if, if these descriptions somehow reflect you know, certain aspects of our lives, Let's come to God in repentance. So let's check on one another. Let's, let's just turn to the person next to you and say, where are you or who are you? And pray for one another in confirmation that we belong to Christ, that we are his sheep, that we hear his voice, and we proclaim him to others so that they can follow him to eternity and to abundance of life.